Hello and welcome Aries to your August 2023 horoscope. My name is Jeff Smith. I am going to be your astrologer taking you through the month's cosmic weather forecast. What's coming up? We've got a lot of weird things happening in August. Everything weird is happening on Wednesdays. So the 2nd, the 9th, the 16th, the 23rd, the 30th. Every Wednesday is full with new energies coming in. Every Wednesday, something else is happening, moving and shaking. Okay. So what we're going to do today, Aries, is we're going to go ahead and take a look at your horoscope. So let's go ahead and pull your chart up. There it is. So what I want to focus on right now is where the sun is traveling in your chart. The sun is traveling in your fifth house of romance, love, joy, fun. Then it's square Jupiter. It's going to be square Jupiter for a little bit. It's also going to square Uranus at some point. We'll get to that. Um, but that's the general feel for the month is to go out, have fun, focus on love, your blessings, all of that. That's what you're going to do. Right at the beginning of the month, we have the full moon in Aquarius, and that's taking place in your 11th house of groups and friends and all of that. So there may be some reuniting with some people, uh, getting together with people. You know, it's in Aquarius, so Aquarius is a different kind of energy. It's not going to be your typical kind of energy. It's going to be a little weird. I mean, that's the only way I can describe a full moon in Aquarius. And a full moon is always a time to illuminate things. So what I'd like to take your attention to now, before we even start going through the days, is I want you to look at where these retrograde planets are in your solar houses, all right? So let's start from the top. We've got Pluto retrograding in your 10th house. So this is about getting perspective on the world that you live in, okay? Then I want you to look at the retrograde in your 12th house with Saturn over here. And then we also have Neptune right on the border of your first house and your 12th house cusp. Anytime planets are retrograde, it's a time for review. Look at that little R, that retrograde R, as a time for review. Now, Saturn is opposite Mercury. So expressing how you feel in a daily way, you know, on a daily basis needs to take some kind of spiritual aspect because it's both of these planets are retrograde in Pisces. This is about lifting the veil of illusion in your life, in any area of your life, and getting that right, reviewing that. Am I speaking my truth? Am I speaking what's inside of me? You know, Neptune in Pisces, it's in its own sign, but it's retrograde, so it's a powerful energy that you can't mistake. So this month, I want you to really focus on where these retrogrades are. There's one, two, three, four, five, six. Got a lot of reviewing to do. The first house, we got the north node, which has to do with your destiny. Chiron is the wounded healer. Where can you get this healing from? And this starts with yourself, with relationships, how you view the world. You see how this all ties in? The nodes are square, Pluto and the moon uh, at this point. And... Uh, how can I heal myself? This is healing yourself and you're destined to heal yourself, you know. Then we've got Venus retrograde in Leo. And that's going to be moving into Virgo. And at in at the end of, it, basically at the September 3rd, Venus is going to move forward. So we're going to be out of that retrograde, but we're acquiring a couple more. <laughs> Just when you thought you were in the clear, Aries. So let's take a look at the uh, calendar. So what's going on here? So we've got the full moon in Aquarius that happened on the second, you know, so that was a, a time to get a new perspective on things. This is being inventive about your problems and solving them in a, in a much more higher vibed way. Okay. Looks like a good weekend, the fifth and the sixth. There are going to be some squares um, between the sun and Jupiter, of course. But that might be uh, maybe staying at home and really not paying t paying for things, you know, going out. Then we've got the first, the, the second Wednesday, the ninth. We've got the moon moving into Gemini. So we've got this weird kind of night and day kind of feel. The, the, the good angel and the bad angel kind of feel. And then we've got Mars square Uranus. So this is when things start to ramp up, okay? Mars, the planet of action and drive. 
is going to be square the planet of sudden upheavals and surprises. And this is going to be taking place in your sixth and your second house. So this is about self-esteem. This is about finances. This is about maybe the schedule has got to change or maybe the schedule ramps up for you. Okay. Um, and then from the ninth on, we're going to see a really good weekend. The, the moon makes a trine to Saturn on the 12th. And on the 13th, the sun conjoins Venus. It's getting ready to move into Virgo. So we're going to be moving from a fiery energy into an earth energy, but we'll talk about that a little later. But the sun is going to be making a beautiful aspect between Venus. The 13th is an excellent time. Make plans for then. All right, now, mid-month, things start to ramp up. The world stage is going to change a lot. I would say starting on the 15th, that's the Tuesday, August 15th on a Tuesday, the sun is going to be square Uranus. We're moving out of that square from Jupiter, and now we're going into a square with Uranus. So this is going to create some upheaval at some point. I don't want you to freak out. This is more on the world stage. Um, and then we have the next day, the new moon in Leo. So let's take a look at the new moon in Leo. That is going to be happening in your fifth house. So with that being said, okay, we got the full moon there. Where is the new moon? New moon. Hello, new moon. Damn it. What did I do? All right, new moon in Leo. This is going to be happening in your fifth house, Aries. So this is, again, a new chance for new love, looking at things. How do I give and receive love? You can see that uh, during that time, there's some excellent trines that kind of even out this crazy energy. I mean, look at Venus and Sa uh, not Saturn and the sun and the moon on that day, on Wednesday. They're all either going to be trine, the healer, and the north nodes, or they're going to be square Uranus. This looks like volatile, volatile energy, but we have an earth trine, a grounding trine going on between Mars, between Uranus and Pluto. And the Pluto square the nodes. I'm telling you, on the world stage, things are going to hit around that week, starting probably on the 15th. You heard it here first. Yeah, and then Mars is going to be trining Uranus. So we've got this energy that's kind of, wow. I mean, oof. can't wait to see what's going to happen then. But man, oh man, I mean, that's crazy. Then we've got uh, the moon opposite the next day is to Saturn. So our motions may be frustrated. But then they kind of even out. We kind of get the things going on the 18th. That's when the Mars makes a conjunction to the moon. And the moon transits are pretty fast. Uh, but, it, you know, we, we get frustrated on Thursday and then we kind of make the actions on, on Friday. And then the moon moves into Libra, more balancing energy on the 19th. And then the moon makes a really nice sextile and very lucky, harmonious aspect to Venus. So the weekends look great. It's the middle of the week that everything turns to shit, <laughs> you know? So, I mean, it's... it's like like I said, now we're getting through the weekend, okay? Monday, the moon moves into Scorpio, very intense energy. And then we've got, on the 22nd, Mercury, the planet of communication, making a good trine to Pluto. So now we're speaking our perspectives. Maybe we're speaking our truths around that time. And then on the uh, also on the 22nd, we have Mars opposite Neptune. So let's go ahead and take, let's go look back at your... Yeah, your solar chart. And then we've got Mars opposite Neptune. So Mars is going to be up here, right about to cross into Libra. Not yet, but it will be. So before it goes into Libra, it's going to hit your Neptune in your 12th house again motivating you to look at things. This is about having faith. This is about putting faith to practice. This is about making things work, okay? That new moon energy right now in Leo is making you look at love yourself, love your life. You know, it's really going to spark that fire back up in you, you know? It may be a little wonky, but we're going to get through it. All right, Aries? Now, on the 23rd, here we are on the other Wednesday. 
The sun is going to be moving into Virgo. So now the sun is going to be moving into Virgo in your sixth house. That's about now the energy shifts from romanticizing about it to actually physically getting it done. Okay. Um, and on that same day, ding, 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 Mercury goes retrograde on the 23rd. So Mercury is going to be retrograde till September 14th. So that's a three week period where we don't want to sign any contracts. We don't want to speak anything that we're going to end up putting our foot in our mouth, you know, that kind of thing. So again, we move into the weekend as we get clo closing out the month. On that Sunday, the 27th, Mars is going to be moving into Libra before it makes an opposition to Neptune. So it's asking you to pull the veil off over your eyes about some situations that you got going on, you know. And then, uh, so you've got Mars moving into Libra. So that's, a, you know, Mars is trying to weigh options and it's trying to, you know, it may tip the, sc the scales out of balance. The sun is opposite Saturn at that time. So the sun will be making an opposition right here to Saturn in your 12th house. Again, it's asking you to get rid of these, these uh, dark feelings that you have and work through them. Let the light pierce through some of those dark areas of your life and cleanse it. You know what I mean? Um, then we, on the 28th, that Monday, the moon's moving into Aquarius. And not only that, Uranus is going retrograde. So that's going to be one, two, three, four, five, six, seven planets retrograde, eight planets, because Venus is going to dip out in the beginning of September. But at that time, at the end of the month, there's going to be eight planets retrograde. There's a holding pattern going, going on. But with the retrogrades happening all at the same time, these big heavy hitters all kind of slowing down, it's making everybody take stock. These last two weeks are going to be incredible. And then we have another full moon, another full moon, Aries. We got two new, two full moons. We have this going on on August 30th in Pisces. And that is going to be taking place in, guess where, your 12th house. So right here, we've got your chart with the full moon there. And it's going to be opposite Saturn as well. You know, it's and then we've got Neptune also opposite Mars. This, this month is going to close out with a bang. I mean, boom, 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 boom. But it's asking you to balance things out. You know, Saturn's the lesson teacher. What lessons are we learning here? You know, the moon is get your emotions right. Neptune is is creating that that vibrational hum for you to, all right, let's let's release this. It's time to release it. When I look at Mars opposite Neptune, I can't help but think that there's a release going on here. It almost seems to me like the wind blowing the fog out of the way so you can finally see clearly. But that's going to be a choice. That's going to have to take action, balanced action. All right, Aries. Every Wednesday, the 2nd, the 9th, the 16th, the 23rd, and the 30th are all going to almost be time shifts where things start to put some pressure on. You know what I mean? But you've got this. It's about having faith, about loving yourself, loving your children, your family, being steeped in blessings and having faith that the universe will provide you what you need. All right. All right, Aries. This is going to be one hell of a month. Let me know in the comments how your month is going to be going. And I will see you in September. Thank you.